never saw it coming. And we may not see the next one either. Uh, the American people are not as safe as they ought to be in the event a disaster occurs. On September 11, 2001, the world watched as New York's bravest battled the inferno of two fallen towers. In August of 2005, Hurricane Katrina battered New Orleans, leaving behind a trail of devastation and destruction. What the world saw on those two days would set the precedent for public safety communication and management. Although both incidents were dramatically different in size and scope, each taxed the very limits of responder capabilities. It would take me many hands and feet to count the number of times I've heard from operators in the field, we've got it under control, we're taking care of this, and in fact, it's not getting taken care of. People consistently underestimate the challenge that they face. As the challenges of daily response become increasingly complex, public safety organizations are taking a deeper look at how emergency events are managed and coordinated. After 9-11 and Katrina, we had an awakening in public safety that we really need to be able to communicate with each other. The very worst situation you can face, after, no matter how many years you're in this business, is to be in a, in a crisis and Press the button and nothing happens because you haven't connected it up. Interoperability is the ability for responders to share information via voice and data communication systems on demand, in real time, as needed and as authorized. Oftentimes, the assumption is that the problem with interoperability is the equipment doesn't uh, interface properly. But in fact, most often the problem is there's no agreement on what the language is, who speaks to whom, and what the protocols are. And that becomes the biggest barrier to interoperability. Knowing who you're going to talk with and how you're going to talk with them is more important in the planning stages than anywhere else. If you look at all the after action reports on the, these major disasters, what's the key component of the problems is communications. We have to have communication across the spectrum. We have to have resources. We have to have a common strategy. And then we have to look at what can we do before the crisis. This renewed focus on responder preparation has prompted some officials to reevaluate their communication plans. Interoperability is not a magic word. It's about every day knowing who the players are around you. When most people talk of interoperability, they're usually referring to devices or radios that you can patch together. But the reality is the most important ingredient in interoperability is relationships. In Katrina, I'm told that the uh, scene required 150 helicopters. Uh, the governor of Louisiana, as I understand it at the time, had only two or three or four available. Uh, where do you get 150 helicopters? You might have a particular scenario that you've got to manage and you know that this county has exactly the vehicle you need to do it. If you've taken the time to build those relationships and understand who has what capabilities, it really helps when the time comes. It becomes so important on a day-to-day -day basis that relationships count, that they mean something, but it does mean you're going to extend yourself a little bit to get something going. But the reward is incredible. One example of interoperability working efficiently would be the Washington, D.C. sniper case. We brought lots of officers from every level together, and within about three weeks, we were able to capture these two rampaging uh, killers. But because we did unified command, a strategy, flow of information, respecting each other's responsibilities, we were able to exploit any break in the case and leverage it for the public safety. It's a great example of doing it working together across many city, county, state, and federal jurisdictions. I think we can do it all the time. We just gotta sort of have the mindset that we wanna do it right each time. As officials and responder organizations look to optimize their response strategies, five essential interoperability elements have proven to yield the most effective unified response, 
these areas would soon foster in a new era of emergency and disaster response. We are living in a different world now after Katrina and 9-11. We've got so many tools to use to improve. We've got the National Emergency Communications Plan, we've got NIMS, the Incident Command System, and now we have the Interoperability Continuum, which is a program put together by the federal government from practitioners and stakeholders, people like us that are out in the field, to use to improve public safety and deliver a better service to the public. The Interoperability Continuum consists of five critical success elements that together aid responders in preparing for an emergency situation. Governance, standard operating procedures, technology, training and exercises, and usage. Each of the elements is assigned a lane, which depicts the various stages of interoperability within each category. The continuum has got several phases to it, okay? So what it does is kind of helps you find out where you are or where you should be going. As agencies broaden their relationships to include other jurisdictions, counties, and states in their response effort, the continuum provides a path toward achieving optimal interoperability. Organizations are able to track their progress and set goals by following the continuum left to right. The more connections, resources, and relationships agencies have, the better prepared they'll be when local emergencies or disasters occur. The continuum is really about being able to take that tool, self-evaluate to make yourself better, your department better, your region better, your state better. As interoperability increases, agencies and organizations begin to achieve a higher degree of leadership, planning, and collaboration. Using the interoperability continuum, any organization at any level has a customized path to streamline coordination and communication. The first lane of the continuum is governance. Governance provides the framework upon which agencies and jurisdictions can collaborate and make decisions. Governance is critical to have in place um, for funding issues, memorandums of understanding, interlocal agreements are all examples of governance. Strong governance allows counties, states, and regions to establish common guidelines and principles based on each agency's strengths and available resources. You're not going to have a crisis without elected officials having tremendous pressure on them to deal with their constituents and the public at large. They're going to have to understand what you're doing. They may not have every procedure memorized, but they're going to have to be a key partner in what's going on. Give them the information we can give them and enlist their support. So it's very important that everybody work together and meet regularly so that we know what problems are going to arise so we're not surprised that, hey, Fairfax is changing to a new system and now we're going to all have to reprogram. It's not just 1,500 radios in Fairfax, it's 10,000 radios in the National Capital Region. One lane below governance is Standard Operating Procedures, or SOPs. SOPs are the formal written guidelines for emergency response. A clear, unified set of SOPs enable responders to coordinate across jurisdictions and disciplines in an emergency scenario. Standard operating procedures are the basics to dealing with a crisis. Those are the things that happen before the crisis, which allows us to work together to make organization out of chaos. SOPs set the protocols and procedures for problem resolution, equipment usage, and integrated communication. Without a solid set of SOPs, crisis response would have no structure. One of the areas SOPs address is the proper usage of technology on the scene. SOPs establish common protocols for voice and data communication and coordinate how the technology interfaces between jurisdictions and disciplines. I love the technology because it helps me get the tasks done I want to do. And in a crisis, it helps us leverage and exploit information. We can connect the dots, but first we have to collect the dots. And the computers and technology and interoperability allow us to collect the dots so we can make the connections. It may be as simple as having shared channels among our police department fire department or our fire department and a neighboring fire department. Those simple little things that can be done that don't cost any money at all become vital 
every day as you use this tool to continue to grade yourself with. As technology changes, responders and officials are beginning to see the value in the fourth element of the continuum, training and exercises. When different jurisdictions train and exercise together with their technology, skills are kept sharp and solid working relationships are built, which results in decreased response times. You don't want to meet your teammates in a game on, on the day the game begins. If you plan for local events, small events, you will be ready for the big events. We did three interoperability exercises this year. Yes, you can, you can have an exercise, and yes, you can, you can go through all the technical pieces of it, okay, and you need to learn that piece. But, but the ability to have worked with folks before and know, know somebody coming in on a mutual aid is huge. One of the key areas where you can practice the interoperability continuum is in special events where you're going to have large crowds or an event that spans over several days where you bring in your key players in public safety and you use the same tools that you would use for a disaster for managing these events. Usage is the final element of the continuum. As agencies train and exercise with one another, they become increasingly familiar with the equipment they have available to them. Putting radios, computers, and gateways to use on a regular basis helps responders stay familiar with how the systems work and helps keep the technology up to date and operational. There's a lot of push after 9-11 when all the grant programs started giving money out. Um, a lot of equipment was purchased. A lot of equipment was um, sat on shelves. The usage of the equipment that you've already purchased and already is in a position of your agency or department has to be pulled out of the closet, pulled out of the back room, pulled out of the shed behind the jail, and put to work and tested. Don't think it's not the latest, it's not the greatest. You have it, you need to use it. The time to realize that you don't know how to use something is not when you're showing up to handle an incident or an event. Many of these agencies don't really train or exercise together and therefore they don't have a lot of experience working with each other. So what you've got to do is you've got to get the leadership committed to making agreements and understandings about how to work together and then they've got to train and exercise their personnel to that set of agreements. What we're really talking about is the interoperability continuum where you're not just setting something in place and then leaving it. You are continually training, exercising, and improving uh, your capabilities and then reviewing both after the exercises and actual events what went well and what you need to improve. While the continuum offers a path toward more effective communication, organizations still face many challenges and hurdles along the way to implementing the program. The realities of our day-to-day -day budgets and the economy uh, start to put a drag and, and things like exercises and regular planning meetings uh, can start to fade off a little bit as you're continually trying to do more with less. By working together in collaboration, it's a more reasonable price tag for everyone. It's, it's more reasonable for our taxpayers. If we collaborate together, uh, we can share the burden a lot easier than us trying to do it all ourselves. You know, maybe you decide in a cooperative environment that one agency is going to buy this transportable vehicle that can come out and set up interoperability and we'll make it available to our whole region. I think a lot of people are resistant to interoperability because they fear losing control. This is a regional system, it's interoperability, but it's not Chattanooga, it's not Hamilton County coming in and telling you how to do communication. The way to do it is to realize that each department, each agency, all have unique capabilities. All of law enforcement and fire service join because they have a desire to be there when things happen, to be helpful to the community, a part of the action, to be there when crisis occurs. So what the leaders have to do is leverage that, leverage that desire to be there, that desire to want to be involved into helping uh, organize the crisis. Interoperability starts by reaching out, connecting, and working together toward a common goal. The key to advancing interoperability throughout is really getting everybody together, sitting at a table and talking in person, working out MOUs, working out how are we going to do things. You can have the best planning, the best procedures, the best training, and the best technology, but if you don't have relationships, none of that will come together. 
Relationships are the foundation upon which all five elements of the continuum are built. Solid alliances across jurisdictions and disciplines provide responders with the tools needed to excel within each of the five elements. Strong governance establishes a framework for protocols, policies, and processes. It allows stakeholders to collaborate and make decisions that represent a common goal. SOPs are the written protocols and procedures that establish an action plan for an event. They include details about all aspects of communication and coordination, as well as the processes for problem resolution. Technology allows responders to effectively communicate via voice and data communications, on demand, in real time, as needed and as authorized. Training and exercises help keep responders across jurisdictions and disciplines sharp, mentally prepared, and highly trained in the event of a disaster or emergency. Usage ensures that equipment and systems are tested on a regular basis and can interface with neighboring interoperability partners. Usage keeps responders trained on their agency's communication gear and establishes regular testing and maintenance schedules. Public safety agencies that are pursuing new interoperability solutions will find the interoperability continuum to be the most comprehensive and effective solution for streamlined communication and coordination. Being prepared for the next major disaster starts now by establishing relationships, organizing resources, and developing plans before a disaster strikes. Some of the states who have the best interoperability. They've always had a major, significant emotional event. I think we have to understand here that egos have to be set aside, politics has to be set aside, economic interests have to be set aside, because you're dealing with the lives of the American people. If you get that perspective, I think you'll get a result. We have to have an epiphany an epiphany, a change in our mindset that breaks down all the barriers and builds all the bridges to make this smooth out. We don't need to talk about cooperation, we need to live it. It only takes a few people to be that champion to push the wave of interoperability. Only when you build that entire continuum can you have a degree of confidence that you have the level of communication you need to properly manage an incident. Earthquakes terrorist attacks, shooting rampages, floods, fires. In today's world, first responders have to be prepared for the worst. At a moment's notice, there's no room for mistakes. The interoperability continuum provides the framework needed for a quick, effective, safe, and coordinated response. When responders work together as a larger unit, there's no challenge too big to overcome. The time to act is now. Contact a neighboring agency, make a phone call, set a meeting, reach out and build those critical relationships because they'll be invaluable when you need them the most. Visit safecomprogram.gov and see how you can start achieving interoperability in your community, county, or region today. When lives count on you, you can count on your neighbors to be there with you.